Welcome. This is an explanation on how to send emails using Expense Tracker if you've run into some difficulties. Now, Expense Tracker allows you to export your expenses and any photo receipts you take via email and send them as attachments. Now, if you're having difficulties, then it might be because of the email settings that we use built into Expense Tracker are not quite working. For this very reason, we allow you to set your own internet provider's email settings. So let's take a look at how you would set your own email settings. From the main screen, we're looking right now at a list of logs, in this case only one log, we tap the Prefs button. From the Prefs button, we look down and see and tap the Email Settings button. Now the Email Settings button exposes this Email Settings screen that when you come into it will look like this. To set your own settings, you need to turn on the Use Own Settings switch by tapping it and then filling in the rest of the information. You'll see that there are several pieces of information you need to set. Not all of them are required by all internet providers, so you're going to have to check your own internet provider as to what the settings need to be. These are the same settings you would use to set up an email on your desktop computer. So if you have that information, it's the same information. Now these pieces of information start with the server. Now this is the outgoing server that you might see um, in your uh, desktop because we're only doing outgoing. This expense tracker allows you to send emails. So the server needs to be the outgoing email server. In this case, we're using Gmail and the, the server is smtp.gmail.com. Now you, you'd be clued in to see that the, the server name has the letters SMTP. It is very likely that your server will also have the letters SMTP in it as well. For the port number, that will also accompany the server information for your internet provider. For Gmail, we enter 587. If you had a different port, you just tap the port, enter the number, and hit save. Now, Gmail requires authentication, so we have that switch on. If yours does not, just tap it to turn off. If it does, tap it to turn on. Now, requires authentication for an email server just indicates that the server wants to protect from unwanted, from unauthorized use. So, it requires you to enter your login and password. In this case, for Gmail, we have to enter in our full Gmail address, not just the username, but the username at gmail.com. For the password, we enter the password in. And for Gmail, it requires SSL. Now, you will have to check with your internet provider to, to see if it requires SSL. In this case, Gmail does, so we have it turned on. Now, we'll save that. Save this. And once again, we're looking at the list of logs. Now, you'll, all, you'll notice that there's an email button at the bottom of the log view screen. And there's also an email button, once in one, in one moment we'll take a look, at the bottom of the, the, the uh, individual log screen. Now let's take... For tap on the log to open the log and tap on email to send the email. This screen allows you to set your format, how your data will be sorted, your expenses will be sorted, and any filter you, you choose to, uh, to set. Filter allows you to limit the number of expenses exported in this particular email. So if you wanted to export only the expenses for a particular category, you would tap this field and then tap the category that you wish to to limit the expenses to. In this case, we'll just hit the back button there and come back to this. We won't set any, any filters. And then we'll proceed by tapping the email button. Now the from address I have there, you need to just enter once. It will remember the from address once you enter it. The to address is also remembered the, the very last address you enter. Now you can enter the to address in two separate ways, by tapping on it and entering it by hand, or by tapping the blue arrow 
and selecting it a name from the contacts list. If by chance you select a name which has more than one email, Expense Tracker will prompt you and ask you which one you would like to use. You can also enter a CC address, CC address by the two methods, either by hand, I'll just hit cancel here, or by tapping the blue arrow. You can edit the subject. The subject is defaulted to the name of the log, and you can enter any kind of message you'd like. You also have an option to include photos as attachments or not. If you were to tap this off, then only the exported expenses will be sent, no photos. But we'll turn this on and hit the send button. And in a moment, we'll get a message that tells us that the email was sent successfully. There it is. Now this might take a little longer, or may actually take quite a bit longer, if you have many, many photo receipts. Photo receipts uh, can take up upwards of 350k if you're using the high res per photo receipt. Now Gmail in this case has a, a limited of 10 megabytes for an email. So if you have more than 30 expenses uh, with photo receipts and you try to send an email, the email may not get sent successfully. In that case, you would want to use our Sync Docs option to export via Wi-Fi. But most cases, email works just fine. If you have any questions or run into any problems sending email, please be sure to call us at 978-579-9696 or email us at our support email, which is info at silverwaresoftware.com. Thank you for using Expense Tracker.